so folks, the Spino, the speaker and name only, is going through major issues today. Today specifically, really, just in the last few hours. And he is trying desperately to scramble and get out of it. Largely by trying to finally throw George Santos under the bus because he realizes that for everything that Santos is facing, criminal, all of that, he is implicated 100% being hit by those same criminal charges that are looming over Santos and in some cases have basically been announced. But also, he has just been hammered in court. Based on criminal charges, he has been hammered by a judge in a way I don't think I've ever seen a sitting Speaker of the House get hit. In this criminal case, the judge has dragged McCarthy in a brutal manner that we have to talk about. But we start with the fact that George Santos's new scandals and the brewing ones as well are trapping McCarthy and he has no way out. You, along with your colleagues, um, have sought to draw the public's attention to the brazenness of George Santos. And again, um, Kevin McCarthy beholden to a brazen liar. Um, what do you make of his standing and the fact that he's still there? Look, George Santos has more scandals and more lies than the rest of the Congress combined. Um, Mr. Santos, by his own admission, is a terrible liar, which is the most honest thing he's ever said. Uh, <laughs> but more than a terrible liar, he is a liability for the Republican Party, and deservedly so. You know, when, when a party allows itself to become a cult of personality, around a fraudulent figure like Donald Trump, snake oil, snake oil salesmen like George Santos will inevitably follow. And so I see George Santos not as an isolated phenomenon, mm -hmm. but as a symptom of a deeper rot, which is Donald Trump. And so it notes there that he's beholden. McCarthy is beholden to this, right? There's, he has helped to create this situation where there is no escape for him. There really isn't. And all of these criminal outcomes, he will be implicated, 100%. Because when you look at the main thing Santos lied about, forget about his university education, his family past, all of that. One, that stuff isn't criminal. And two, McCarthy had nothing to do with that. But when he started lying about fundraising and those sorts of things, Kevin McCarthy did know and had a greater responsibility to know and to do something, and he never did. And this further reiterates how as this ethics probe and stuff into Santos opens up, it's going to nail McCarthy. The House Ethics Committee has officially opened an investigation into New York Congressman George Santos. In a statement, the committee said it would investigate a slew of allegations against Santos, including potential campaign violations, conflicts of interest, and allegation, one allegation of sexual misconduct. It is the latest in a series of local, state, and federal investigations surrounding the Republican. He is facing bipartisan calls to step down after he admitted to lying about his background and experience. He briefly responded to the probe on Twitter, writing in the third person, quote, Congressman George Santos is fully cooperating. There will be no further comment made at this time. Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Dan Goldman of New York. He's a member of the House Oversight Committee, and he hand-delivered the ethics complaint to Santos's office back in January. And uh, Congressman Dan, um, curious what the what the goal of this complaint is. Well, the goal of the complaint is to open an investigation, which uh, I'm very encouraged that the House Ethics Committee has done on a unanimous bipartisan basis. They will now dig into all of the financial red flags uh, surrounding George Santos's campaign, including where he got more than $700,000 that he donated personally to his campaign. Um, so we're optimistic that the Ethics Committee will move very quickly uh, and expeditiously in this investigation. And I'm very gr glad to see that George Santos says he will cooperate. That cooperation yeah. means that he will need to turn over all the documents underlying his uh, his own entity that he created that funneled money to himself, as well as where the seven hundred thousand dollars came from. You know, that's like 
That's that's a, a big thing there. Santos, if he does indeed cooperate, he'll have to hand over every piece of paper he has. And while a lot of people think this is McCarthy trying to throw Santos under the bus by, you know, launching this probe, and, you know, that's, I, I think, what he wants us to think, in reality, he has resisted doing this tooth and nail up until this point because he knows that in those papers, we're going to see, among other things, how people like Stefanik and McCarthy and their staff and their allies knew that George Santos was doing things that were unethical at best and criminal at worst and are implicated in it. And so when you're looking at punishing the people who allowed someone to fraudulently enter office, yes, you got to punish George Santos himself above all, but you can't stop there. You have to keep going because it's not just that McCarthy enabled some lies. He is he, he assaulted democracy in the process, as this congressman notes. Uh, Tucker Carlson does not believe in the truth. Uh, the whole idea of government should be that you treat everybody equally. Our ethics laws, as I understand them, say that each congressperson, we can't do anything for one constituent. We wouldn't do for another. So if you start opening something up, it goes to everybody. It's simple due process and fairness. It's what America's about. There's no way that exclusive should be given to Tucker Carlson. If you want to give up the tapes to everybody, that's one thing. But you can't give them to one person. And it's an indictment of, of Speaker McCarthy for having done that or thought he could, thinking he can do that. But it, it's part of what you had on your previous episode. It's about the truth. It's about fairness. It's about the American way. We don't see that anymore. What we see is lies that started with Donald Trump, lies that uh, George Santos has taken, that others have taken the Republican side and they just get away with it and it's wrong and the American public should and will deserve better. Like it really is like, right? Like Kevin McCarthy doing what he's been doing in the last little bit has created this scenario, right? We're going to get in to what a judge has just done and the judges, you know, uh, hammering of McCarthy and the, the charges that they're now connected with. Um, is happening because of these moves in particular, the Santos stuff and the, the the decision to give the tapes to Tucker Carlson. All of this is just desperate flailing. The Spino has no direction because he's just trying to survive. And again, as noted, there is a sense right now that he's doing this. And while some Republicans are trying to spin, you know, Santos's probe finally starting as McCarthy actually doing his job, really, all this is, I feel, a delay tactic. In a unanimous vote, the committee said they will investigate whether Santos broke any laws during his 22, uh, 2022 campaign, as well as his financial disclosure forms in the House and allegations of sexual misconduct that Santos denies. Santos's office says he is fully cooperating with the House Ethics Committee. And joining me now is the Republican Congressman Anthony uh, Desposito, who represents a neighboring district to Santos, wants him expelled from Congress. Congressman, I appreciate your time. You're also, of course, proposing to block Santos from making money uh, with future books or speeches. I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. But first, how does this ethics probe move the ball forward here? Well, I think, first of all, we need to focus on the fact that uh, Leader McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, uh, has uh, been a man of his word. He has spoken to the New York delegation and those of us who have been super critical of George Santos. And he said that uh, there would be an, an ethics investigation. It would be swift. It would be comprehensive. And that's exactly what we have uh, begun to see yesterday. And I'm looking forward to the results. Uh, listen, uh, I spent uh, a year, uh, my life in law enforcement, uh, years in law enforcement, I think. Like it notes there, like they're trying to defend McCarthy. That's a Republican who's been one of the few and, and principled guys, I have to say, at, 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 at calling out for Santos to resign. He was one of the first Republicans to do so. But he's, he's totally off base in defending McCarthy here. Because one, we know McCarthy is implicated in the scandals. We know that he knew about George Santos' impropriety and kept him around because they wanted to win the seat, um, because he needed him for the speaker vote, and because he probably felt that the media would never catch it, and it didn't matter. Kevin McCarthy is not mad that George Santos defrauded the people of his district and the country. He's mad that he got caught and embarrassed him and embarrassed other Republicans. And that's what's happening here. So while, yes, he can technically say that if the probe looks bad for Santos, I can vote to expel him and I could lead that vote, that's a long ways away. I don't think McCarthy is going to keep that deal. And I think that McCarthy is going to have a vested interest uh, having allies on the committee downplay this, not necessarily to protect Santos, but to protect him.
Controversial New York Congressman, Republican George Santos, now officially under investigation by the House Ethics Committee. It will look into multiple issues from his campaign finances to a sexual misconduct allegation. Our great reporters are back. And, you know, Santos is now infamous uh, for just lying and lying and lying and lying. Uh, but the substance of these allegations are quite serious. The committee has acknowledged its investigation. Potential unlawful activity by his 2022 campaign. Potential violations of federal conflict of interest laws for work he did uh, for a firm providing fiduciary services. Uh, he may have failed to disclose information on his statements filed with the House and a sexual misconduct allegation that he made an inappropriate advance towards someone seeking a job in his office. So America knows George Santos is a liar. That's a serious list. Yeah, it is a serious list. Look, George Santos' uh, house career is hanging by a thread. Mm -hmm. And it, it is this, you know, typically the House Ethics Committee, Senate Ethics Committee, they do these investigations. It's a slap on the wrist. They get admonished. No one cares. This is different because not only is the scope very, very serious, but the Republican leadership, Kevin McCarthy, has now staked Santos's career on the outcome of this ethics probe. He said that time and again, as I've pressed him on this, others have pressed him on this, he's now pointing to that ethics probe. He says if they find any wrongdoing, that's when they could push him out. And how do you push him out? An expulsion resolution in the House requires two-thirds majority. If Kevin McCarthy gets behind an expulsion resolution of George Santos, he is done. He's not going to be a House the, member anymore. That's what his... But the, the question is, if you go through that serious list, how... House Ethics Committees, and I'll get to another one in a minute, uh, these investigations tend to go on forever and ever and ever and ever. So does Kevin McCarthy, you know, does he want to get his wish, but not right away because he needs George Santos's vote? Well, he does continue to need George Santos's vote. It's a math problem. Uh, I, I recently did a story about uh, shamelessness in, in, in American politics in this new age long that story. we're in. It was a long <laughs> story. And this is where we get to this thing in court today, because not only with the Santo stuff, but a judge has just made it very clear that what Kevin McCarthy is doing with the J6 tapes may well be illegal. And they're in, in a criminal trial for a J6 thug who's facing all of these penalties. They took moments out of that criminal trial to hit Kevin McCarthy and say that what he's doing with the tapes goes against the principles, not only a fair access to evidence, but also in protecting that evidence beyond the bounds of a courtroom. It says here, I don't know what case by case basis means and why the House Speaker gets to choose which defendants get to see what the, the judge noted. I know that the Capitol Police is not the Speaker's office, but it seems from what I'm reading in the papers that the Capitol Police has been involved in those discussions. The judge demanded a sworn declaration from the Capitol Police within two weeks as to whether there has been any restrictions whatsoever as to what the press can do with those CCTV videos once they receive them. From what I've read, Tucker Carlson seems to think he has unfettered discretion about what he can do with these videos. This circuit has said, that means the circuit court, has said that you have to guard privileges like crown jewels. If the press is given unfettered access to those videos, they don't seem to be treating these things like crown jewels, the judge declared. Basically saying that Kevin McCarthy, in an illegal sense, is disregarding the rules of the court when it comes to the CCTV stuff. By giving it to Tucker, and unless he's made secret deals about what Tucker can and can't show, but he said it's totally uncensored, unfettered access, he is going against the circuit rulings. Kevin McCarthy has screwed himself more so. He's done everything to protect himself and protect his cronies, but all he's done is ramped himself into not only one, but two criminal investigations.